You explain your pain for no gain. You may be seated in the presence of God. Somebody say amen. amen. I am so excited and honored to be in Hello God Jesus 2018. And it's a blessing to see each one of you. I thank God Dr. Shiko for the ladies in Seattle. They slay and they pray. Tonight you are slain. Hey! Tell your neighbor we slay and we pray. Hallelujah. You know the Bible says we are fearfully and wonderfully made. When the Bible says we are wonderful, it means we are full of wonders. Hallelujah. And you are all looking lovely tonight. I give God praise for your life. Before I go into the short word that God has laid in my heart, the Bible says it is good to give honor to whom honor is due. I want to begin by honoring uh, Dr. Shiko, the visionary of Hello Gorgeous. Hallelujah. A great woman of God that I love, honor, and respect. Hallelujah. Together with her husband, Pastor Steve, that I have known over the years. And I want to thank God for their passion, their commitment to the gospel. May heaven honor you. May God continue to strengthen you and empower you to fulfill the assignment. We celebrate you. Can we put our hands together as we celebrate Dr. Shikontego? Hallelujah. God bless you and thank you for gathering us all here tonight to celebrate the woman. Hallelujah. I also want to honor JCC Kent for also inviting us all here to be part of what God is doing. Can we appreciate them in the name of Jesus? And tomorrow in the morning and in the evening, we shall be there before we fly back to our motherland, Kenya. Somebody say amen. Uh, secondly, I want to honor the woman of God that ministered here some few minutes ago, Apostle uh, Helen Sutlers. A great woman of God. This woman is a powerhouse. Tell your neighbor, a powerhouse. You know, hey, this woman of God, I love her. Last year when I was preaching in Dallas, Texas in Fresh Aroma Conference, we were both guest speakers in the same conference. We met and our spirits connected. I celebrate you, woman of God. You are a voice to this generation. Can we appreciate Apostle Helen Sutlers, a voice to the nation, a mother to the nations. We love you and we honor the grace that is upon your life. Somebody say amen. All the great men and women of God in this house will love you to my friend uh, Emiko Skei Matubuko, a great woman of God. We salute you. One people coffee and Mrs. Matubuko. Hallelujah. We salute you, woman of God. Uh, Evelyn Wanjiro, another great woman of God. Can we appreciate God for her life? Hallelujah. And the ego doctor of Fueneke. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. We salute you to the glory of God. And today is my first time to see you one-on-one, -on -one, Dorothy. I watch your clips online and uh, we bless God for your life. You are amazing. Can we appreciate the other MC, Dorothy? Hallelujah. And all the ladies that are here tonight, I celebrate you. As we came uh, to Seattle, I came together with my PA. She's right at the keyboard. I want her to just wave. Princess Irene, would you stand and wave? Can we appreciate her with a hand clap in Jesus' name? Somebody say amen. amen. Now get ready and stay ready. Tell your neighbor, get ready and stay ready. Amen. In 
the next few minutes, I just want to speak into your heart a word that is a short word and then pray for you that God has laid in my heart. I believe with all of my heart. I may not have come with wings like an angel, but I know that God has sent me as a messenger with a message uh, to somebody. So open up your heart, open up your spirit, because something is about to happen. Somebody say amen. You know, I thank God for all the women that are gathered here tonight. I always tell people, never underestimate the power that God has invested in a woman. The Bible says it is the seed of the woman that will crush the head of the serpent. My God, you are more than your Luca. Talk to your neighbor, say, God, yes. You are more than your look. Hey, please stay. tell that lady next to you, I am more than I look. I am more than you can see. Hallelujah. I am more than I look. I am more than you can see. And I want you to know that greater is he that is in you. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to know that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Somebody say amen. amen. Lift one of your hands above your head as you're seated. Please just power this microphone a little bit. You know the destiny of a preacher is in their voice. Just power the monitors on this microphone that you've given me. Somebody lift up your hand above your head in the name of Jesus. Shalabaka doza. Father, as we get into the hearing of your word, Razo Kadesha Ragadoza, Yande Bashalaba Hande Lete Bosea. Oh, Father, we have gathered in your presence in Hello God, just to hear your voice. I declare in the name of Jesus, let me speak your counsel in the next few minutes. Let your word come forth with power and with clarity. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, let these women be blessed. Let these women be empowered. Let me be your mouthpiece. Let me be your oracle tonight. Let your word in my mouth be fire. Let the hearts of these ladies be receptive. Any lady under the sound of my voice that is believing you for a word through this message, give that person a word. Any lady that is believing God for open doors, give it to them. Any lady believing you for breakthrough, give it to them. Any lady that is believing you for healing, give it to them. Any lady that is believing you for a sign and a wonder, give it to them. I pray for unprecedented miracles. Father, tonight as ladies, we leave our buttons at the feet of Jesus Christ. Father, speak to these ladies in the language they will understand. In the mighty name of Jesus, that you read this place with your glory. Have your way. Thank you for what you are about to do. Father, we worship you and we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, shout amen. amen. As I get into the word, allow me also to announce a few books. By God's grace, I have written 12 books, but I brought uh, uh, four copies of uh, some of the books I have written. And uh, just allow me to mention a few of them as I get into the word. And ushers, you can be carrying the copies around and God will bless you. The first book is uh, Every Problem Has an Expiry Date. Please, uh, because I want you to help me feel at home, I want you to know the name of the gorgeous lady seated on your right and on your left. You know, a stranger is a danger. And a stranger can intimidate. I will be telling you to talk to your neighbor. Hallelujah. I will be telling you to talk to your neighbor. Do you know their names? Yes. Hallelujah. Do you know their names? Yes. All right. Hallelujah. And for those that are meeting me for the very first time, Reverend Lucy Natasha. So the first book that I brought is a book that I have entitled Every Problem Has an Expiry Date. Give that lady a high five and tell her every problem has an expiry date. <laughs> Hallelujah. This book is an encouragement to the women. That no matter what you go through, though your problem is lasting, it is not everlasting. It has an expiry date. This book is an encouragement that no matter what is your condition, your condition is not your conclusion. Amen. Give that lady a high five and tell her your condition is not your conclusion. Hallelujah. I don't have time tonight, but in this book, 
I have looked at the different people in scripture that had situations that looked as though they were impossible and how they conquered and came out of their affliction. I want you to get a copy of this book. Each book is just $10 and God will bless you. Then we have the book Touching Heaven Through Prayer. Secrets of a Prayer Warrior. I thank God for every woman that is here and I want you to know an important secret that a prayerful woman is a powerful woman and a prayerless woman is a powerless woman. Hallelujah. I came to challenge every woman that is here. Don't fight your battles with words. Fight your battles on your knees. Hallelujah. Because victories are won on the knees. Hallelujah. I want you to get this powerful book on prayer. It will ignite your prayer life with fire. It will soak you in the spirit of prayer. Prayer is fellowship with God. Prayer is communion with God. Prayer is a place of revelation. Prayer is the meeting point between divinity and humanity. If there is a woman to pray, there is a God to answer. Ah, the God that we serve is a prayer answering God. And I pray for every woman here tonight. Receive the spirit of prayer in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout, I receive. I receive. Then the, my, the third book I brought is a book uh, uh, before you say I do. Tell your neighbor before you say I do. Can I see all the single ladies wave your hand if you're here and you're single? Although some of you don't know if you're single. Okay, let me help you understand if you're single or not. Because some are lifting like this, others are lifting like this. Hallelujah. It is because there are three types of singles. Can I go deeper? Somebody say go deeper. Now, there are three types of singles. That's why some of you are not sure if you're really single or if it's complicated. But let me settle the matter. Hallelujah. There are three types of singles that are seated in this auditorium. The first type of single is the single and satisfied. That means they are single but they are not looking to be in any relationship. They are single and they are not trusting God for a life partner. They are not trusting God to be married. Those are the group that I call the single and the satisfied. Tell your neighbor the single and the satisfied. That is the first category. You have just decided maybe you were married before and it didn't work and you are like now I just want to concentrate on my life or on serving God or on my career and you've decided you don't want anything to do with the relationship. That is the single and the satisfied. Or maybe like the Apostle Paul, you feel that you have that grace and calling to celibacy because it is not everybody that is assigned for marriage. Somebody say amen. So we have the single and the satisfied. Then the second category of singles we have in this room and I know most of us are born again but they are still there. It is the single and the sinning. Tell your neighbor single and sinning. <laughs>
the single women. And for tonight, I narrow it down to the women. You know, one of the, the second most important decision you will ever make in your life after the decision of receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior, it will be the decision of who you marry. You don't choose who is your brother, who is your sister, who is your mother, who is your father. But when it comes to marriage, God gives you the freedom of choice. Whoever you marry determines if you succeed or if you fail. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. Amen. If you marry the right man, Amen. you marry a prayer partner. Amen. If you marry the wrong man, Amen. you marry a prayer point. Hey. That is why you need to read this book. So that like Dr. Shiko, you will marry a prayer partner. Amen. Not a prayer point. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I refuse to marry a prayer point. A man that is making you every day, you are like Rosa Katesha Rakatosa. Change this man. Transform this man. Deliver this man. Somebody say, the devil is a liar. I prophesy to all the single ladies. Uh, as we get married, oh my God, our marriages will not be an endurance. There will be an enjoyment. Our marriages will not be a frustration. There will be a fulfillment. Hallelujah. So anyway, I wrote this book and it's dedicated to all the singles. And I wrote how to identify true love. How to fall in love without falling into trouble. Six types of men you should not marry. And I will give you two examples. Somebody say amen. amen. And six types of women you should not marry. Amen. Let me give you two examples. So let me first go to the, I said six types of men. The first type of man I am praying for every single lady you should not marry is the Solomon man. Tell your neighbor the Solomon man. This man is polygamous in nature. The Solomon man is a heartbreaker. The Solomon man is a womanizer. The Solomon man is a flat and does not have boundaries. He will flat with you, your sister, your cousin, your neighbor, your grandmother. The devil is a liar. The devil is a crazy liar. Run away from the Solomon man. Tell your neighbor, run away from the Solomon man. He's a heartbreaker, a womanizer. Pleasing women is Solomon's expertise. Hallelujah. He's a charmer, my God. He's an enchanter, the Solomon man that does not understand boundaries. My God. The second type of a man, because I'm mentioning in brief, is the unbeliever man. Tell your neighbor the unbeliever man. I know some of you have been waiting on God and you feel like God is taking time. But I want you to know it's better to wait long than to marry long. Hallelujah. Some of you are running to the unbeliever man because you are seeing as if time is going. But I want you to know marriage is a lifetime commitment. Look at your neighbor say neighbor. It's better to wait long than to marry long. Tell your neighbor when you rush, you crash. The Bible is clear. Two cannot walk together unless they are agreed. And even the Apostle Paul has admonished us not to be equally yoked with unbelievers. Somebody say amen. So even if the man looks like Denzel Washington or his Brad Pitt gorgeous, say, or his Mr. T.D.H. tall, dark, and handsome, if he's not born again, scratch him off the list. Come on, talk to that lady. Tell her, gorgeous. If he's not born again, he's not right for you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Then we have the mama's boy. I say two examples, hallelujah. Let me also give you two examples of the two types of women you should not marry. So that you will not become that woman that men should not marry. Somebody said the devil is a liar. I believe in her Lord gorgeous. Her Lord gorgeous is going to bring, is going to produce women that are role models to their daughters. Women that when their sons grow up, they will have to look at them so that they can know what to look for in a woman when it is their time to marry. Somebody say, I receive. Somebody say, I receive. Somebody say, I will be a role model to my daughters. Even if you don't have them now, you are a future mother. You are either present or future mother. So prophesy to your 
Jesus hell. Somebody say, I will be a role model to my daughters. Hey, say, I will be a role model to my daughters. Somebody shout, I receive. Now listen, I, I, I don't want you to be in the first category is the Safira woman. Somebody say the Safira woman. The Safira woman is uh, what is your partner in crime. You remember Safira and Ananias. She knows how to cover up evil. My God. She encourages carnality. Somebody say the Safira woman. Tell that lady next to you, don't be a Safira woman. Don't be a partner in crime. Somebody shout the devil is a liar. The second category is the gold digger. Somebody say the gold digger. And I believe today there is none here. Hallelujah. Somebody say there is none here. I am bringing my generation that God will raise women that are women that just don't draw eyebrows, but women that will also that can also draw business plans. Tell you, tell that lady next to you. I I draw eyebrows and business plans. Hey, hallelujah. I pray that God will raise women in our generation. That when it is our time to marry, the only thing you should present is not your birth certificate. Tell your neighbor when it is your time to get married. The only thing you should present should not be a birth certificate. I pray that there shall be a title deeds. Somebody say, I take it. Also, this book is available. I don't want to talk much on it. And lastly, this is a book dedicated to ladies, the God's leading lady. You are a diamond. Nothing can break you. Somebody say, I am a diamond. Nothing can break me. In this book, in short, I have written on different women in scripture. The challenges they overcame, the victories they got, and women that we can learn from in the Bible. Women like Deborah, women that serve God with power and spoke the word without fear. I have written on the woman with the issue of blood and how she touched Jesus. I am praying that we will learn from these women. Women like the sugar, my woman, the woman that trusted God in times of adversity. I have written on the Proverbs 31 woman, a woman that was called to godliness and virtue. I have written in this book on the seven secrets from the life of Queen Esther, a story of from grass to grace, hallelujah, and how favor was a game changer in her life. In this book also, I have written on Queen Sheba, on her unquenchable thirst for wisdom. I've also written on Hannah and how she dedicated her children to God. And I'm praying that every woman will also get a copy of this book. Somebody say amen. amen. As I share the message that God has laid in my heart, every time I look at the word woman, I see the acronym of a woman as W, a warrior. If you're next to that lady, tell her, you are a warrior. You are an organizer. You are a manager. You are an administrator. You are a negotiator. Now speak to yourself. Say, I am a warrior. I am an organizer. Hey, I am a manager. Oh, I am a, an administrator. First Samuel chapter 1. And he had two wives. The name of one was Hannah and the name of the other Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. That is verse 2. Verse 6. First Samuel chapter 1, that was verse 2. Verse 6. And her rival also provoked her severely to make her miserable because the Lord had closed her womb. Verse 10. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Hallelujah. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Verse 13. Now Hannah spoke in her heart only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli or Eli 
thought she was drunk. Hallelujah. Verse 19. Then they rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord and came uh, to their house at Ramah. And Elkanah knew his wife and the Lord remembered her. Verse 20. So it came to pass in the process of time that Hannah conceived and bore a son and named him Samuel saying, Because I have asked him from the Lord. First Samuel chapter 2 and verse 21, a continuation of this story. First Samuel chapter 2 and verse 21. And the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bore three sons and two daughters. Meanwhile, the child Samuel grew before the Lord. Father, we bless the reading of your word. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, shout Amen. amen. In the next few minutes, I just want to speak on a prophetic word. Gorgeous, your story will change. Give somebody a high five as you announce this prophetic title. Say, Gorgeous, your story will change. Come on, talk to two beautiful ladies. Say, Gorgeous, your story. But listen to me, you need to understand there can never be a glory without a story. There, anytime you see the glory, ask the story. There is always a story before the glory. Before you can get a testimony, you go through a test. Before a breakthrough, you go through a breakdown. My God. Before a testimony, you go through a test. Before a triumph, you go through a trial. Some of you that are seated here tonight uh, in this wonderful uh, Hello Gorgeous 2018, you are there and you are saying, I don't understand the story of my life. Today I came with a word of encouragement. And I want us to look at one of the women that I've also featured in my book, God's Leading Lady, Hannah. This is a woman that was married to Elkanah. And Elkanah had two wives. The name of one was Hannah herself. And then there was the co-wife, Penina. To be barren means to be unproductive, to be unfruitful. Uh, to be barren means to be dry, to be desert like. Before I go deeper, there are women that are seated here under the sound of my voice. And you are saying, woman of God, I feel like Hannah. I feel unproductive, unfruitful. I feel dry. I feel desert like. Maybe in terms of relationship, in terms of marriage, in terms of business, in terms of career, you feel unproductive. But I stand tonight to decree and to declare every form of barrenness in your life. We command it catch fire. Somebody say catch fire. Somebody say catch fire. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy to you under the anointing, you will be fruitful. In the next half of this year, I declare your relationships will be fruitful. Your marriage will be fruitful. Your businesses will be fruitful. Your career will be fruitful. Your work with the Lord will be fruitful. I command every yoke of barrenness be broken in the name of Jesus. Watch this now and the Bible says because of Hannah's condition, Benina her co-wife mocked at her. Benina kept Hannah shaken on the inside. My God. You know some of you that are seated here, you have a Benina. Benina represents a suppressor. Benina represents an oppressor. Some of you, you have a Benina at your place of work. A Benina in your family. But I came to announce to you that Benina is not there to destroy you. That Benina is there to push you to your miracle. Somebody shout amen. amen. And I am praying for somebody tonight. May God turn that mockery to victory in the name of Jesus. I said your mockery will be turned to victory in the name of Jesus. Now let us look at Hannah's approach. Hannah, as Benina mocked at her, as Benina provoked her, Hannah resulted to go into prayer. Hannah would have chosen to complain and she would have gone complaining to her happy Elkanah or to her friends, but she chose not to complain. I've come to discover when you complain, you explain your pain for no gain. When you complain, you remain. Ah. When you complain, you remain. But when you pray, you rise. When you praise, you rise. Ah. Hallelujah. Hannah did not complain. Hannah chose to go into prayer. As Benina continued provoking her. Some of you that are sitting here, there are people that are provoking you. There are people that are mocking you. There are people that are talking about you. But I 
grant your petition. May God answer your prayers. May your prayer request be turned into a praise report. In the name of Jesus, somebody say, I receive. I receive. Watch this now. And the prophet, the priest said, may God grant your petition. And the Bible says in verse 19, and God remembered Hannah. And God remembered Hannah. Hallelujah. I came to tell a lady tonight, God will remember you. God will remember you. In the next half of this year, what you could not accomplish in the first half, receive grace to accomplish. God will remember you. God will remember your family. God will remember your situation. God will remember you. Somebody say, Lord, remember me. Two significant things happened and we pray when God remembered Hannah. Number one, in the entire Bible, we don't read of Penina again. That means, hey, shakadosa, ragade, ragadosa, hey. When God remembered Hannah, in the whole Bible, we don't read of Penina again. I am praying for a woman here. May God give you a miracle that will silence the mouth of your enemies. Hey. May God give you a blessing that will silence the mouth of your enemies. May God open a door for you that will silence the mouth of your enemies. May God give you a husband that will silence the mouth of your enemies. May God give you a promotion that will silence the mouth of your enemies. Somebody say, Lord, oh. silence my Beninas. Beninas. So the first thing that happened, we don't read of Penina again. And the second thing that happened, you know Penina had children, but the names of her children are not mentioned. We don't know who they were or what they did. But when God remembered Hannah, Come the on, first child that God gave Hannah was Samuel. Samuel was a major prophet. He anointed the first two kings of Israel. He was a church in Israel. When God remembered Hannah, he gave Hannah a razokadeh. I prophesy to somebody here. May God bless you above your adversaries. I know your Benita seems like they have gone ahead of you. But overtaking is allowed in the kingdom. I release an overtaker's anointing. You will overtake your adversaries. In the name of Jesus, I say you will overtake your adversaries. Shall I receive? I release the anointing of acceleration over your life. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive the anointing of acceleration. You will overtake your beninas. You will overtake your adversaries. In the name of Jesus. As you are standing up on your feet. And the Bible says in verse 20 of 1 Samuel chapter 10. 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 20. In verse 19. And God remembered Hannah. Everybody be standing as I get ready to pray. And the Bible says. And God gave Hannah a Samuel. Samuel means I prayed and God answered. After her long conscious 2018, I see the Lord giving you a Samuel in the form of the job you have been praying for. I see God giving you a Samuel. Ah, oh, hey, I prayed and God answered. God giving you a Samuel in the form of the promotion you've been praying for. I see God giving you a Samuel in the form of the husband, the papers. Hey, I don't know what you've been praying for, but God is getting ready to give you a Samuel. I see somebody say, 